Hello, everyone. Go ahead, Willie. Chris, we <laughs> talked I about this. Chris, we up. talked about I this. I up. was going to go. <laughs> I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. We should have confirmed. I fucked up. Go ahead. Go. What's up, everybody? It's Chris, Trevor, and Willie here with the Full 40 coming at you live from our individual homes. Chris is fucking this up already, so we're going to get this better next week. <laughs> I'm a mess. I'm like the old guy who can't fucking work technology. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, Emmett says full 40 trying to do an intro challenge. <laughs> yeah, we can't. so good. <laughs> we can't. We can't get off the ground. All right, if you're still listening, we're presented by Home Field Apparel. Um... <laughs> All right, Chris, take it. I don't care. I, I, know, I, don't, I don't even know. What are we even talking about? What's, what's, is there I mean, a season going on? Yeah, there's a season going on. We played a basketball game. Um, I think the first thing probably do is for me to address the nation um, with what uh, specifically UConn Nation. Um, no, I'm not addressing anything. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> that game went exactly the way I hoped it would, except we lost. So, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, I, I want to address that, actually. Everybody that was, like, bookmarking the tweet and beating their chest about how ridiculous you were and everything, I was just like, you're the number one team in the country. You escaped with a one-point win. It was an awful game. Well, it was a great game to watch. First things first, it was a great game to watch. Yeah. I'm sure UConn fans were miserable um, until the very end. But I don't think there is anything for you to apologize for, oh, Willie. No, nothing at all. What's actually f- fucking hilarious, though, is, like, the whole take was more measured than that. But at one point, I was like, well, if, like, I was like, the clip doesn't really show that. But I was like, we fucking clipped it ourselves. Like, we put, we did this. <laughs> well, we put the out the damn media. Yeah, that's the damn how media. clickbait works. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. I clickbaited myself. I was like, yeah. Because I was like, I definitely go ahead and say, like, you know, I thought there was, I said I was like 65% sure. And then, thanks, Susan. Um, <laughs> and then the, I think what was the funniest part to me was just like, I mean, I got a lot of, got a lot of you. I made a lot of UConn friends is what I'll just say. You know, I love being out there. Uh, some people call me a bitch and I was like, that's fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> it's weird. I, it was just like, what am I going to do? I'm on a Villanova podcast. I'm not going to like go here and tout UConn. But what was like just funny about it was like, I didn't even say like UConn's bad. Like I, I feel like I've said all season Creighton's bad. I've been on the record of saying <laughs> that. I had never said anything wrong about UConn. I was just like confident in Villanova. Um but here we are. But that was a lot of that was a lot of fun. A measured take. We're not having this conversation. So you know what? They they called you a bitch. Most of them were actually pretty nice. They were more like, aha, yeah. gotcha. But like, yeah. whatever. They were mostly pretty nice. No one called you Hitler. No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get called <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> no one called you Hitler. I will not make that ver- <laughs> I will not make a Providence uh, game. Uh, what's the prediction? <laughs> Willie is not basketball Hitler, <laughs> but but Ed Cooley is. <laughs> when is that game again? It's uh, on Saturday, Saturday, right? I don't know. Saturday? Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one, yeah. Um, God bless them. Yeah. We'll, we can touch on that a little bit later. We should do a yeah. little bit of a Big East whip around. But, yeah. like, uh, but yeah, well, I guess maybe talk about – we could talk a little bit about the game. Uh, I just it, got it. <laughs> it went exactly like we thought it would in that there were several minutes of us not – able to put an offensive possession together. Um, then there were several minutes that we couldn't put a defensive possession together. Um, it was pretty much a Villanova game. Uh, <laughs> the uh, obviously we, we played the game that Willie needed us to play to get you, the win. So you knew you needed an ugly game for, for us to be able to win that game. Like, like against Marquette, everybody in the world knew we came out shooting too well to win that game and the score was going to be too high, but um, that was exactly the formula we needed. Unfortunately, we had, you know, you start the game down 11. <laughs> I really, really, it's just a fucking <laughs> handicap. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I get onto a golf course and I'm like, uh, you know, 
10 strokes. <laughs> yeah. I get onto a basketball court. 11 points. I hadn't even started watching it. I was like still driving back and I look at my phone and I see 11 nothing. I'm like, damn. And I just see all these UConn people like, I'm like, you know, we got you right exactly where we want, want you. And we almost did. You know, we almost, if we really look at it, we won the last 35 minutes of the game. So who was laughing now, UConn? Over the yeah, last 35 minutes this. of basketball, you're losers. Yeah. Um, the uh, <laughs> funniest part was we do this thing at, at home Villanova games where we don't sit until we score our first <laughs> I forgot about that. For five and a half minutes to start the game. It was just wow. – and I was in like a standing room section, so it was like perfectly fine. I was like, everybody else has to suffer with me, kind of thing. But I just <laughs> looking down at everybody's just standing like the. It was a great game. I'm not gonna. It was obviously an unfortunate ending, um, and you know, mistakes were made throughout. But it was a fun yep. game. It was a great atmosphere too. The the, uh, the home atmosphere was legitimate. It was definitely really good. I, I joined briefly joined a UConn space after, and there's a guy who they have who goes to like all the different away games. He tries to he's he's been on like a road tour, and he said that believe it or not, this is crazy. He said he said based versus all the other schools that he's been to, Villanova student section was the best. And it was like the craziest, most hostile atmosphere of all the games that he's been to yet. So, so probably goes... the closest game that he's been to, aside from the one like he went to the Butler game. And I, I don't remember any. Guy. I don't know any of their scores. I know the games they lost, they got killed by yeah. Seton Hall. So I would assume that this was like the most back and forth. Like team thought they had a chance, so they're going to be loud the whole time. But that's <laughs> that's how it should be. Yeah, the, the, the Villanova student section, just fans in general, I think is like indicative of like really like like this season, like low floor, like where like, OK, sometimes it's fucking dead silent. <laughs> and then other times, like like that game or whatever game was Saturday, like we can we can bring it. That's good. to That's good to hear. Um, don't really. Yeah, it's good to, good to hear that, <laughs> that we were able to have a little bit of fun there. Um, but also, my oh my, how the mighty have fallen that we're sitting here talking about, oh, this was a great atmosphere, instead of just like, yeah, we finally got we got a big W under our, our, our belt. So yeah. It should have oh, been. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, – Nana and Joku not being able to play really hurt, I think. I think so. I, I actually, think so. He's worth like three points in terms of defense. Like it's not even it's it's uh, in terms it's, of defense. It's who he replaces. Yeah. In terms of yeah. Defense, yeah. 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 No, yeah, I just also, more so. You we want to talk about it. We can talk about it. Continuation yeah. of my pass the ball award from last week. It stays in Lance Ware's hands. Um, minus fifteen in like nine minutes. Yeah. There's, it's. <laughs> not he much. doesn't check himself into the game though. So I, I understand that. Game. But also at the same, like, I get the thought that you need to use your backup center when you have seven footers on the other side. Like, I don't know if Burton and Hart would have been able to I don't, do much I don't better. Get, they would have been better on we, offense. Yeah, That's I don't get sure. why we don't put Burton there more. That just feels like my thing that I would start to do when Lance doesn't have it or Nana's mm -hmm. unavailable. It's just like, fuck it, Burton, you're going there, and we'll just see how it works. But at least offensively, it throws something different at them. Yeah, yeah it does. It creates, an, it creates a different look where yeah. we go smaller. So like, yeah. like instead of trying to match someone you can't match, you you try and create a different advantage, acknowledging the disadvantage. We're not going to beat you. You weren't going to beat Klingon and Samson Johnson and everyone by trying to be Klingon and Samson Johnson. Like you have to throw something different at them. Um, and plus, we switch we, everything in front of the post all the time. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, we yeah, threw no, something out there. Just, it was definitely you know, different. I was just that was the best <laughs> devil's advocate I could muster. Um. <laughs> But I, I don't I have much like, else other than he's tall. I don't know. Try it. Eric's tired or Eric has fouls. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Neptune has to get to the point with with where where Jay got with Daryl Reynolds in the 2016 season. Okay. Daryl, we love Daryl. And he was an awesome component of the 2016, 2017 year and had some really good games in the 2015, 2016 year. But he was used really in spot minutes as the backup center, and it would just be to get Chef a little bit of a breather here and there. 
but he, but like Reynolds was a little bit of a project when he was on, when he was at school. Um, but like, that's kind of like the, 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 the process that Lance Ware should take. It shouldn't be like, we shouldn't go a whole TV timeout or like a TV timeout plus with, with, with Ware in that, that stretch where we got up two in the game, two, three in the game. What was it? Four. And he, and he takes out Dixon and puts in Ware. And he wears in the game for like I don't know. It felt like five minutes, but like that that stretch was the game. We went we went back from up four to down nine. I don't know. I think it was nine. I think we went down four to down uh, up four to down nine. It was a thirteen point swing. We had three eleven two eleven point two eleven zero runs put on us and one thirteen zero run. I believe it was four to nine. Yep, it was forty two thirty eight. That substitution happens. More or less, and yeah, then fifty-one forty-two. Yeah, but if you don't count those runs, as you <laughs> said from your friend, we win sixty-one to to thirty-five. Thirty so. sixty-five, sixty-five to thirty-one, or some yeah. crazy <laughs> shit like that. Absolutely insane. Seven and a half minutes, thirty-five zero. Thirty-two and a half minutes, sixty-five thirty-one. <laughs> so, oh God. If you hear me, UConn Nation, if you just don't count those seven and a half minutes, we beat you by 30. The full Flip 32 it. and a half minutes. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, so the comments, the kill shot chart, which has been circulating Twitter for a few days, like we knew it was bad. <laughs> we did it. Seeing it on a chart hurts. Seeing it on a chart <laughs> is Don't just personal. Like, <laughs> yeah, we are, um, we're setting new heights to, uh, to metrics here this season not in a good way <laughs> i was like interested and i might try to do my own research on it at some point but like historically where does that fall at like <laughs> because it feels absurd that like just historically where that's at um it feels it, like whatever top the 75 of, yeah. just to be clear it feels like the opposite of whatever the uh yes, 2018 sure. team was doing like if if we play if this team played the 2018 team night in and night out, it would it'd just be like the opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> if this team played 2018, I, I've, I've said this before 2018 was actually like the meanest Villanova team we've ever had. Like, they were just not actually nice, but they were nice. Um, they probably win by like 48, like, I 48. Yeah, easily. 18 does to this team what this team does to DePaul, is what I'm yes. hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Coach, head coach list, DePaul. Um, <laughs> but there would be still 20 minutes in that game where this year's team beats the 2018 team. Exactly. The other 20 minutes, it'd be down 60-0. <laughs> but, um, but just to explain to people who might not have seen it, Evan yeah. Mayakawa, who is who does he's a big stat nerd on thing, and I say nerd in like the kindest terms. Like this. Chris is a nerd; he's allowed to call people a nerd. That's right. Um, he he has a great uh, he has great websites. Great, he puts out great um, all different types of like nuanced ways to to digest data from college basketball, and it's a thing called a kill shot. And a kill shot is a defined as a he defines as a 10-0 run. And he tracks who goes on offensive kill shots, who goes on defensive kill shots. We in the top 75 of college basketball, by a large margin, give up the most kill shots. So like when you think like, oh, we give up these 10-0 runs just like breathlessly, and it feels like it happens a lot. Statistically, we do, and it's more than everybody else by a lot. <laughs> like really bad. <laughs> And so, and so our inability to score, which was something that was like in, in spurts, which was something that was true last year, and it's more true this year, is statistically proven to be accurate. So if you feel that way, you're backed by science. So, so like that's just the, the description of what was going on. Um, that the was the game. It, it was those yeah. three. It was those three kill shots. Yeah. And it was the two uh, the two more plays, which I which I gotta be honest with you, I, I, I it's it's on I, I that's on him. Yeah, I, what, the way ones, yeah Clark the second Snicker. they yeah. call the first one, you you can't do it again, even if the first one I thought was a flop. Um, yes, Justin puts his hand back there, and that helps the ref make the easier call. And I don't think he really made 
contact with him and the dude just sold it. Um, but once he makes that first call, you cannot go for it again. Yeah. I, the the worst part about this, than this, he was beyond the guy in the second yeah. one. He didn't even need to throw his arm. Yeah. Yeah. That it's also fun. just <clears throat> when we spoke about this, like we do this every fucking game and every game we have to come back from this. And it's just like, heck, maybe just it's a six, nothing run, you know? <laughs> and then we, uh, I don't know, Kyle, a hard foul, a timeout. I don't know what we need to do to change this, but like something, because it's just like, we are putting ourselves behind the eight ball every single time. And like this Yukon game, I felt like it Marquette. I felt like it, um, I don't even remember whatever. Like, I don't, those, those are the most two John, recent. St. John's. St. John's. St. John's. Where, yeah, St. John's is probably even a better example. Where, like, we put ourselves behind the eight ball. We work our ass off to get there. We get tied or we get within one. And then, of course, like the other team adjusts, make the, makes the adjustments, starts making baskets. And then we don't do this anything. And then, boom, it's an eight, nine, 10, 11 point game all of a sudden. This is, I mean, we. You want to talk about narratives? Like, we haven't called it a narrative all season, but, like, this is a narrative. Like, we give up too many runs, and we do not adjust whatever that adjustment may be, whether it's getting uh, substitutions right, whether it's something we need to do from a a schematic standpoint. We give up way too many runs, and we're just not – like, if you look at the chart, which is interesting, like, where we probably do the same amount of 10-nothing runs – at the same level, but we give up – like, no one else is giving up 10 nothing runs to other top 75 teams at the level that we are, or just any team. So, I don't know. Uh, something's got to give, but, like – It is the single biggest – I think it's got to be the single biggest narrative of the season, right? Yeah. Like, like I, I'm trying to think of what the other narratives would be. Rotations, right? Like, which What's feels so, aligned with this to some degree. <laughs> what's so interesting to me is, like – if you feel like I just like, even without looking at this, it's interesting because it's not that I think the defense is doing anything wrong necessarily. It's just offensively, the water shuts off yeah. for four to six minutes at a time. And like, and most teams can score points in a four to six minutes. Most track. people, <laughs> most teams can score 10 points in six minutes. Like I would be curious to know, like how many of these are stretched over like a th- three plus minute span. Like, I don't think a lot of these are instant blitzkrieg, like, okay, four straight threes and we're down all of a sudden. It's Marquette just like, was, but other Marquette, than that. Yeah, Marquette was. But like, not many of these are like this. Like, well, I, what was it? We were, UConn didn't score for like five minutes and we still were down five or whatever it was. I can't remember what, what the, yeah. actual, what, whatever happened. But like, that's just a, I mean, if we make the tournament, that's just going to be like the number one thing every like every talking head talks about. It's like Villanova will give up a run. The question is like, do they have the lead when they give up the run, and are they able to hold once they do give up the run? It's just at this stage, you just got to you got to build it in. And it's not weird. one run, several runs. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, several it's runs. So weird because it's like it's like the team fights, right? Like, like it's, like, it's fights like their ass off. Fight, but why did you have to let it get there <laughs> <Yeah>. to begin with? <laughs> um, but like, it is funny because like, it's, it's something that I don't know if you can even fix it, but like, if it were to be fixed, it's something where like, Hey, sometimes weird shit happens. And especially in a tournament, single elimination setting where like a team's going to throw up a run on you. If you take a talk about attitude, right? Like and yeah. you could like actually have the, experience in real games dealing with it it probably does become a little bit easier to like manage back into a game after you've given up a run they just need to not have it happen three times a game it needs to be like once it went to overtime it was going to be four times so i mean the the other thing too is i get neptune not wanting to call his first time out within the first like four minutes of the game. Like the first within the first TV timeout, I get not wanting to call timeout. I was begging for it. But yeah, like aside from that, he needed to have called time he did call timeout the second one. He did call timeout the second one. And then the third one, I I think we just hit a TV timeout naturally. Yeah, but like you see some of the best coaches in the NBA, like the start of the second half, like the first two possessions don't go their way and they call a timeout like 44 seconds into the second half. And it's like, okay, yeah, we just talked about this. 
this is me showing you that this isn't, you know, like people do it. Great coaches do it. Neptune, I get wanting to hang on to your timeouts, but certain point when you're down four with three seconds left, like what good is another timeout? I, you know, yeah, it's frustrating. <sighs> so interestingly enough, aside from that, I actually thought Kyle had a nice game. <laughs> other than other than the problems <laughs> that we can't fix, seemingly this season, I thought it was a great game. <laughs> like I said, yeah. I had a ton of fun. Um, you guys were seated below me. You got you and Brian. You looked like you had a great time from uh, my vantage point. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a fun game, fun environment. It was. I was, you know, I, I felt like I was doing my tax. I could have done my taxes at the last game I went to because of how quiet it was. But that was a fun, loud environment. It was full early. Um, yeah. Even going back to when I was a student, like, Wells Fargo games would never fill up before tip-off just because everybody would still be outside or at Xfinity. But I think um, everybody kind of realized the moment and – uh and what this game was going to be, and and they filled up the section, and it was uh it was a great environment. Just yeah. you know, came up a little short. There was a few things that I want to point out to the positive side. I don't want to be overly optimistic guy here, but I know we lo- I know we didn't. I know we still had the same exact spurts of not scoring and whatever. But there were certain things that I felt like we were doing offensively that I liked when Hawson was in the game. We've been get we've been better with Hazen for like since New Year's roughly. It just in how we manage him, even if he doesn't score, and he was good in this game, running around constantly, which was getting defenders to chase him, and they were they this, they had the right scout on him. They were on him like why on right. He could not get a shot up. I think he did. He shoot once, maybe twice, the whole game. Twice, I think. Yeah, um, but couldn't get an inch of daylight. But that's fine. That's actually still a positive thing when you are when he has to draw a defender that far away from the hoop and has to bring him that far out, like it creates room for the other guys on the team to operate. That's good. Like he has, he has extreme shooting gravity and people just you have to stay attached to him. Like uh uh we like haven't done this as much as I would like to see it, but like Dixon gets doubled in the post every single time he gets the ball. But when Hawson's on the same side as Hawson should be on the same side yeah, of him every single set. Because you can't double Dixon because the second you do that, Dixon will kick it back out and Hawson is getting an open three, which like you don't want. Like we need to scheme that more in. Anytime Dixon gets doubled and Hawson's on the floor and he's not on the same side as Dixon, I'm screaming at my TV because I'm like, he needs to be same side all the time. We made some good adjustments when they st- – whenever Dixon gets doubled the first time, he almost always coughs it up. Mm-hmm. But we made good adjustments. Uh, I remember one specific play. It was beautiful, Villanova basketball. Dixon gets the ball down in the post, um, and and the double comes. He immediately kicks it out, whip, whip, whip around, got it to the, got it to the opposite side of the court, opened three, and banged it home. Like that was pretty basketball. That's the type of thing where that's the type of thing that we need to be doing because if they're going to double Dixon, like that's 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 how you got to attack it. We made that adjustment and it caused UConn to have to shift their defense. So, like when I say like there were some really positive things that I saw during the game, I also just tend to I also liked. I felt I feel like sometimes when we go on those stretches where we don't score, it's because we're just playing garbage offense. Mm-hmm. I felt in this game. We just weren't shooting well or didn't weren't score. I don't know how to say it better than that. Like some of it was we didn't want to go inside on Klingon because we knew we'd get blocked. Some of it was that. So there were some unfortunate decisions, but like I did feel like we were getting into our offense better than I expected to in this game. Um and UConn's got UConn's pretty damn good defensively. So, like, I I, I thought so – I'm just calling it out as somewhat of a positive. The other side of the positive is defensively, I thought we were really solid. I thought we were very connected, communicated really well on the switches. Yep. UConn runs a ton of shit. They run so much complicated action at, at us, and I thought we game planned for it well, and I thought we were on top of it well. Like, so, like, just from that perspective – if we can carry that <laughs> forward, I have a little bit of room 
from a basketball perspective for some optimism, a little bit. I, I'm going to go. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I, I agree with that. I, I mean, our next two games are going to kind of, I don't say like dictate the season. Like I'll just kind of call it out like these next two games between St. John's and Butler, like I'll add three and just add Marquette. Yeah, Marquette. Yeah. But just adding the road, like uh, this is like, if, if we, cause it, I think we saw, um, I think Bamba said after the game, like it felt like something clicked for us in practice and like, cool. Something clicks for you. You lost to the number one team. I fucking like great team, whatever. That's like, I'm not mad about that. It's now, how do we respond back to that? How do we handle like a good St. John's team and a good Butler team at home or on the road. Like, can we get both of those? We get both of those. I'm way happier. This just also gets to the thing of like, I'm going to go back to this. This is why non-conference games matter and why we can't lose to Drexel and Penn and should have. Drexel's turning against. into a quad one win. I don't know what you, or a quad Drexel's one loss. Legit. I don't know. Drexel is really about. good. I'm yeah, a bear. They're, they're going to be a tournament team. I was doing all my scouting again yesterday, and I was watching a lot of Amari Williams, and I was like, damn. I can just tell you from the vibe the second yeah. I came out, like, this is going to be a tournament team. Um, <laughs> I need to scout. Uh. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, just, like, all that, like, regardless, like, it's still Drexel, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you, like, those wins just, like, that's three wins that we should have, and we should be 14 and four. And then you're like, all right, whatever. Like you could, heck, you could lose to lose all five of these games, and it doesn't really matter. Um, but here we are. Want to watch me do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <'cause... laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> don't do the. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, this is just. It's a key. This is. I think this is the most pivotal part of our season. Like totally. we 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 called this out as the most important stretch. Losing these first two has made these next two games like absolutely fucking massive yeah losing you losing to UConn was never gonna make or was never gonna break the season no. um beating UConn certainly would have helped yeah um like a lot but obviously now there's a lot more pressure on winning the games that we quote have to win um you're not always supposed to beat the number one team in the country that's like how that works um that's why Everybody thought Willie was crazy, and that's why people were making fun of him for saying that we were going to beat them. And even though they were so right, and and Willie was just completely wrong, um, <laughs> um, that would have gone a long way. Um, but again, now it goes back to you have to take care of business at St. John's because we got punked at home. Uh, you have to be Butler on their checkered uh, student section night, which I think is going to look really cool. Um what does that they're, mean? They're, so they they Instead did a, of a white map, and they said if you're sitting in this section, wear a blue shirt. If you're sitting in this section, wear a white shirt. So Hinkle will be like a checkerboard. Um, cool. So I think that'll be aesthetically pleasing. Um, yeah. But we also wear blue and white, so kind of playing yourselves, Butler. Yeah. <laughs> um, so does every other team in the conference. I know, exactly. St. John's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, now I kind of consider these must-win games. Um, so I say it's must that we get two of the next three. Yeah. We got to get challenge two Kyle Neptune 16 straight. Show us. Can you win 16 straight games? Yeah. I don't even know if that, I don't even think that gets us to the title actually. But like, <laughs> regardless, I'll take 16 straight wins no matter what, <laughs> no In, matter um, where it takes us. After the 2018 Big East tournament semifinal or, or opener, I can't remember what it was. And I, I, Unlike me, I had had a few beverages after the game. I was talking with friends. I was like, we're going to win the next, you know, whatever straight. And I said, like, one more than um, what would have been a national championship. And then we did the math the next day. And we were like, you know, that would take you to, like, the home opener next year. I was like, yeah, we're going to beat, uh, you know, Quinnipiac by 30 when we do it. <laughs> you know, like, whatever it was. So make it 16 or 17 straight. And so then I we just... can punk Drexel when we start as a big six next year. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want that. I just did the math. 16 straight would take us, we'd win the Big East final, which means we'd lose the opening round of the NCAA wow. tournament. No, it'd be, no. Like, it'd be so like a, Georgetown. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like a 3-14 game that we like. <laughs> yeah. Nope, 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 nope. Don't want that. Yeah. 20 straight. 20 yeah, straight. there we go. 20 straight. Yeah. 20 straight is good. Um, we, the, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I, I think I think it does put pressure on the next the next three for sure. I mean, we talked about it beforehand. We had to go two and three in this stretch. 
the as as a hold serve thing. I, St. John's is desperate. They're going to be very desperate because they're also mired in a little bit of a losing streak. They are kind gotten, of in the same place we were when we played them. Like both of both programs are in the same place we were when we played them two weeks ago. Yeah, we, we no, neither of them have advanced. Like yeah. like we got bitched by Marquette. They got bitched by Seton Hall. They lost by one to. Um, Creighton. They lost by one to yeah. Creighton, and they lost by one to uh, Marquette. I was going to say, so they 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 played Marquette tough on their home floor, H- held the lead most of the game, um, and then like? lost by one. Uh, so so and they really struggled with Seton Hall when Patino was out with COVID. Uh, so so they have not advanced their season really after beating us. So they're desperate too. So they've they've lost three straight. We're we've lost three of four, and the one is now head coachless to Paul. Um, so it is. I mean, this is a. Both teams are coming into this game feeling like it's a must win on Wednesday yeah. night, which is going to be difficult. And we have to flip the script because we got punked by them in our own building last time, straight up. Um, that that was that was an ugly. Uh, an ugly showing the last time out. We did, we we gave up an early lead and never got back into that game. So we had we had to find a way to slow them down. It was Marquette and St. John's same story. We didn't slow the game down. We didn't do what do what we do as they like to say. But like we didn't do what we do. We did what we do versus UConn. Didn't come away with the win, yeah. but we did that there. So, but we have to find a way to make that game a rock fight in the Garden on uh, on Wednesday night. And, like, I think getting into that, um, this is probably a good chance for our break before we start talking about St. John's and Butler. Yep. Brian, do, do your thing. Do the thing, Brian. What's up, everybody? We are fast approaching March Madness, and I want to make sure that you, your friends, and your family are all ready for that. So how do we do that? Well, we go to homefieldapparel.com, and utilizing the promo code Nova Insider, you're going to be able to go buy hoodies, T-shirts, shorts, all with the newest logos and the old retro logos that you love for all your favorite schools. It can be Villanova, or it could be St. John's. It could be Seton Hall. It could be Clemson. Wherever you go to school, wherever your loved ones go to school, go to homefieldapparel.com. Utilize promo code Nova Insider for 15% off your first purchase. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. I hated that. I'm just going to say my ad walked so yours could run. (laughs) (laughs) I had my script that I was blatantly reading right in front of me. That was – and you you – you didn't. I didn't yeah, you have a that, in ad sales. Thank you. That was all at the top of my head too. There was yeah. like four. There was like four takes. Yeah. Um, Beautiful work. St. John's. St. John's, <laughs> desperate in a big hole. So you know, right where we left them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's not much of a preview because we played them yeah. less than two weeks ago. We're in the same exact place. The only thing that I would call out for St. John's is, I mean, I don't think they didn't have Chris Ledlam when we played them. Um, so they will have at least Ledlam play versus Marquette. I'm assuming he's still fine. Um, so that's going to be another um, just ch- uh, puzzle piece or a piece of the puzzle we got to figure out. Um, Dingle might like, be out though, right? Is it's Dingle, Dingle out? Ooh. Somebody well, that's huge. is. Um, <laughs> But you, you also have to remember, we're, you're playing St. John's on the road in UConn's home away from home. Um, it's going to be very hard to get a win against St. John's at UConn. Everybody has to. <laughs> I, I like, it wasn't you clicking said. for me, and then I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Took you, so that was more yeah. so for Brian. Um, but, um, yeah, it's uh, – Villanova usually fills up the garden pretty well, so I'm, I'm not entirely worried about that, but it should be a, a fun game. Uh, Chris, I know you're going, um, or you were planning on going. Um, that's still happening? I don't, have, um, I don't have tickets yet, but the plan is to attend. It's going to be another Villanova night in the garden, right? I can't go because I forgot to plan it, so... I'm not yeah, that's pretty much what happened to me too. It was on my to-do list, and then I put like in the later section, and it hasn't come out of there. So yeah, <laughs> not gonna be. There. Um, uh, Ding- I mean, Dingle hasn't Ding- played Ding- since cr- at Creighton on the thirteenth. Okay, so he'll play. He'll play on Wednesday, right? He will. Yeah, come back and set a career high. Um. <laughs> um, 
the only other thing, like with St. John's, that I want to talk about is like those the the floor and the uniform combo going back to like the early two thousands, uh, whatever uh, the like with the horse that they had for the Marquette game. Elite. They need to just make. Yeah, I was that. a fan of that. It looks cool. That just needs to be them the whole season. I don't know. Some they used to have like, like a skyline thing on the shorts, which I thought was cool that they did not put in that uniform. I don't know if it was the same uniform, but they used to have that, and that might have been a miss if they didn't, if uh, given that they didn't put that back in. But cool to see them have a retro jersey. Yeah, that was are they that was cool. are they a Nike school or Under Armour? I forget. Weirdly, I don't. I think they're. There's no way they're Adidas. They might have been previously. I think they were Under Armour at least recently. Um, but I'm just curious um, because just randomly dropping a new throw. It, it must be. It might be like the Patino thing that they're. I like, think it's. I think yeah. they're Nike. They're, yeah, they're, they're Nike. Nike as of 19. Okay. Yeah. Under Armour before that. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds. Um, right. No, it's good. Um, I don't. I, I would like to see Eric. Try to get um, Soriano in, in some foul trouble early, I think. I don't know. I'm, this is up. a game for, like, Eric. Like, Soriano's given Eric trouble. We talk about, and, and we've speak about this on podcasts all the time, but, like, Soriano's just always given Eric some trouble. So, like, this would be a game I'd love to see Eric, like, step up and, like, I don't know, overcome some demons. We all got to do it at some point. Yeah, the um, – also, the obvious difference for us this time around is Justin Moore should be playing. Um out the last time and uh it showed or maybe it didn't i don't know um <laughs> but uh we should be mostly healthy still no word on in joku um we'll find out 20 minutes before tip off probably um yeah actually they've been since we were like complaining about it both on and offline with when we were talking to the saint john's guys um uh They've been more active about releasing that report at least like first thing in the morning instead of a couple hours before game time. I agree. Um, I actually have noticed that too. Yeah, I, which I just think is kind of funny. But um, and uh, and then what else? We have uh, Butler after that. Yeah, at yep. Butler. Definitely can dive into Butler. Um, yeah. One thing I want to call out, just as an aside, Embiid hit seventy points. Yeah. That's- I know for anyone who's been tracking. Um Cat but, has fifty three to start the second half, so it's uh it's a big night for centers playing really bad teams. Um, <laughs> uh, Charlotte. So to give everyone a butler preview really quick. So Butler, um this, you're gonna see a familiar face, a familiar biggies face um leading off. Um who some people may be a fan of, others not as much. Uh, Posh Alexander is on the Butler Bulldogs. Um, Posh is kind of just being Posh. Nothing really. I don't think anything has changed. You know exactly what you're going to get out of Posh. Um, the two people I really like on the Butler team, um, I've kind of – we spoke about this with um, Fanta, um, and Fanta called both of these out as like – under both of them out as underrated players. It's Pierre Brooks and Jamil Telfort. Um, Pierre Brooks um, is – they're both wings, both about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, both uh, are shooting very well um, or shooting like from the floor well, I would say overall. Um, Telford gets the line a good amount. Um, yeah, Brooks is uh, Brooks is a really good shooter. Telford is kind of under um, – under, I would say below average, that's the word. Both are transfers. Pierre Brooks is transferred from Michigan State um, and Telford has transferred from uh, Northeastern. Um, so – both big wings who like do a lot of different things. Brooks is more of a shooter. Telford's more of kind of like the connective does a little bit of everything. He's going to rebound the ball. He'll pass it uh, piece. Not, neither of them are like plus athletes, but uh, they should be fine matchups for us. Like we should be able to get um, match up where, like, as we said, we're a really long team. Um, they also have um, a couple big men in, uh, Jalen Thomas and Andre Screen. I'm actually not really familiar with Screen at all, um, but Jalen Thomas, another big man, um, does a pretty good job. Um, uh, 6'10", really good at block, uh, protecting the rim. Thomas was on the team last year as well. Um, and then there's a, a bunch of other ancillary pieces. I know he's probably going to be pissed off that I called him an ancillary piece, but like DJ Davis um, is more than an ancillary piece. He's their other guard. The good thing about their guards is they are undersized guards. We're dealing with, you know, six one and six foot. So 
our traditional way of posting uh, posting up guards and having Justin back should be good for that. Um, but we know Posh knows how to handle that. And then DJ Davis, um, yeah, we'll see how he's able to handle it as he goes into it. Um, fun fact about DJ Davis, he's shooting 97% from the free throw line. Um, but he also is a transfer from uh, – where is he transfer from? I don't remember. Oh, UC Irvine. Um so another just new person in the Big East. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how we match up with him. Uh, he's really dynamic with the ball in his hands. Um, and then there's a bunch of deep bench people um, that, like, if they are making a huge impact in this game, we're probably screwed in any way, shape, or form. So uh, if, like, you know, if Landon Moore or Connor Turnbull are putting – Turnbull are, like, doing stuff to us, like, we're in trouble. So Are we going to yes. get loquacious again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. that's Lucocious? <laughs> yeah. Lucocious or whatever his name Lukosius, is. Lucocious. Yeah. I don't know. Um, not, he's not on the team anymore, right? No, he's not. Yeah. I don't know where he is, but he's definitely on the team. I don't know, but he's got his career high to, against us to, yeah. you know, fall back on. And then obviously, the I'd say the number one. I mean, like, this is a senior Leighton Butler team. Like, if I'm looking right at it right now, we're looking at uh, five seniors in the rotation, a junior. And then there's like a couple freshmen and sophomores, but like they're old, they're gonna be smart, and we're playing in uh, Witchcraft Central Hin- Hinkle Fieldhouse, so like, <laughs> we know some fuckeries about they're to happen. preparing their spell early. Yeah, like, yeah. people want shirts to wear to be able to summon the spirits. Um, so what's, what's the guy's it, name from Hoosier? Hoosiers, Jimmy, Jim, yeah. Chitwood, Jimmy Chitwood. Yeah, they play a little bit faster than Butler years of old. I think they're one fi- around one fifty in tempo. So like Butler always used to be like a, a, a really slower drag them out yeah. team. We just have to be careful with that because we've now played a couple teams that like to play a little bit up more up tempo, and we tend to get dragged into that with them. We should try and avoid that. Just <laughs> again, just like do I want us to play faster than three hundred and fiftieth in the country? Yes. Do I want us to play one hundred fiftieth tempo? No. <laughs> yeah. They are they are I mean Georgetown and DePaul are by far the worst defensive teams in the conference. But Butler is pretty far away from them, but yeah. pretty far away from everybody else too to the to the negative. They're around one hundredth um ranked in terms of defense. So we should yeah. be able to score here. Um so like that those are just two style points that, that I'll point out and then I know you called out some of the players. Brooks, Brooks, and uh, Brooks and DJ Davis do a lion's share of the shooting from the, yep. from three point range. They're like an okay three point shooting team. Brooks is very good. Um, we actually, if you remember, we pair Brooks. I don't know how much he, what he did versus us, but when we played Michigan State, I'm look up how he did versus us. I don't remember what he did, but we did play him um, when we played Michigan State last year. Butler has also been in a little bit of uh, – they've been in a little mini funk. They beat DePaul, and they beat Marquette. Like, interestingly enough, they beat Marquette a few – right before we played them. Well, that was when uh, Jones tore his ACL. Yeah. Um, so, kind of a fluky game. But then they lost to Seton Hall in a, in a really fun – that was a really fun game they played mm-hmm. for Seton Hall. And they got beat up pretty good versus Xavier before – yeah, Pseudo handling to Paul. They only beat DePaul by 14, which doesn't seem good. <laughs> so they've been in a little bit of a uh, funk. I'll in call the them middle a... of the standings. Yeah. So uh, this is look, this Butler team is a lot better than advertised coming into the season, but they are still it's still a game that like you gotta get one of the next two. We talked about <laughs> we, we we keep saying you gotta get two of the next three, you gotta get one of the next two. Yeah. Um and it's interesting. I was just looking at the uh, the Ken Palm predictions. Ken Palm has us losing to St. John seventy four to seventy two, has us beating Butler seventy three to seventy two, and has us beating Marquette seventy two to seventy one. So, like the next we three games, seventy three points in the next three games were golden. Yeah, the next three games are all like supposed to be nail biters. So we'll see. It's so going to be good for my Magida. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, the best thing about, um, I might have tweeted it, um, the best thing about being in like a standing area for the game and 
my sister and my friend that were with me can like attest to this after any play or whistle or anything i had all this room behind me to just like anxiously walk off whatever happened um or didn't happen um it was just nice to be able to like roam um and do my pacing while at the game instead of being confined to my row or um or my seat so highly recommend you want to know something interesting I don't, I don't know i'm just on the side i was looking diving into some stuff to looking at uh efficiency i'm on t rank looking at efficiency profiles i wanted to know like what we villanova looked like historically um the team we're most like as of right now is the 2011 butler team yes the eight seed that went to the finals so ladies and gentlemen <laughs> pack your bags for phoenix we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna eight seed our way there Clip this and put that up there. No, don't. I don't want. Who would be the first eight seed? For <laughs> who's our Gordon Hayward? That's what who's I was going to ask. Who's our, who is who Brendan Hausen? Clearly, <laughs> he's not a starter, so I feel like that's. He's a, also not a power forward or a small forward. Tyler Burton. Yeah. Well, why not Chris Arch then? <laughs> yeah, he has the legacy thing. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be amazing. He's fucking wild. Can you imagine well, like Chris Arch? Just Gordon Hayward's <laughs> dad was like a mailman or something, right? We just yeah. have to find the player on the team whose father works for the U.S. Postal Service, mm-hmm. and that is our Gordon Hayward. Um, Eric Dixon is our Gordon Hayward. Realistic. Could you imagine Chris Arch taking a half court shot to win the title? I mean, I'd take it. I mean, clearly, right now, clearly, I'll I would rather it. give it to Mark Armstrong. Yeah. Is that the play you drew up? Is that really the play that we drew up? <laughs> I would. The the my favorite moment of that game was the second Mark got the ball on the inbounds, and before he took the shot, I was like, "Well, you know, this is going in," and he drains the half court shot to absolutely ruin the spread. <laughs> Absolute Vegas, you're on, you're on my watch list, Vegas. What's up? You, so you got funny. some kind of <laughs> the entire game. My friend that I was sitting with mentioned how um, he's been so cold with his sports betting recently that he he bet UConn um, plus one and a, whatever the I don't know the terms. He he put money on UConn, thinking, okay, I've been so cold that I'll probably be wrong and Villanova will win, and I I'm good to you know spend this money for a UConn win. <laughs> And until Mark hit that shot, he was like, oh, I'm fine. You know, like, it's it's all good. And then Mark hits the shot, ruins the spread, and he <laughs> double lost. Double lose. He had a <laughs> one-point window to double lose, and he did it. <laughs> Which was brought up before the game. He's like, ah, oh, that won't happen. And uh, the second it left Mark's – before it even left Mark's hands, I was like, well, you know that's going in. And then just – it was, he, he swished it, right? There was there was nothing, nothing but net on that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No, it was clean. Yeah. yeah. Just awesome. Trust Mark with my life anywhere foul line extended and beyond, uh, you know, 10, 10 feet beyond the three point line. Is it time for a new segment? Do you want to do a uh, wildcat of the week or should we? I think we kind of did the Big East whip around, right? We, we talked St. John's and Butler. Um, Ed Cooley's going to have the worst weekend of his life. Yeah, we should probably talk um, about Cooley. Um, yeah, we kind of hit on that. <laughs> yeah, all I right. Just, let's hit that real quick. I was going to say one thing, just even about not about Cooley. I was looking at the Big East standings. I love the Big East. It's so good. I'm it's so happy we're a part. I'm I'm so happy we're a part of this. Just shout out to Val doing a really good job. Shout out to all the programs. Even yeah, even you, Georgetown. We're giving you a shout out, DePaul. It's DePaul, a big DePaul finally. For DePaul. They DePaul fired their coach. Finally, yeah, yeah. Which mid season firing we spoke about like that doesn't really happen. Yeah, like th- that's how bad it is. Like. There are people who have active investigations who are who are still held as the coach of the team, and yeah, to Tony just like I mean, basically what everything I gathered was just like there was just kind of like, for lack of a better word, like an embargo on like funds, nil funds to, to for DePaul, where they're like, we're not going to fucking support this program if this is the way it's going to go. Um, so they have to do what they have to do. Who do you think would be the best hire for them? Like the most fun, they should just hire someone fun. I would love. It would be really funny if I don't think he'd do it because it's such a. I don't think the move is worth. Uh, Bobby Hurley was one of the names that was. I saw that, yeah. And I thought that would be really funny, um, but I don't think it makes sense for him to leave Arizona State for to try to revive DePaul. 
Yeah. Um, he has to try to revive Arizona State. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like really warm there, and like I wouldn't want to just go to Chicago for <laughs> uh, you know. Um, but yeah, Bobby Hurley would would provide the most content, I think. Um, Jim Jay Harbaugh. Wright. Jay Wright. Harbaugh. <laughs> Harbaugh. 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 Right. Yeah, one of them. Um, or uh, Belichick. <laughs> Belichick. Belichick. How did you get that wrong? <laughs> I don't um, think you would call me out on it. <laughs> you called Chris out on the bomb mommer jackets. So. <laughs> that one I was laughing. Um, the Will Wade, I think, would be the uh, – it's like – it's I, entertaining. That's still an entertaining hire. Will Wade idea. comes in and DePaul's cooking immediately with some illegal shit, but they're cooking. No. Well, it was it's illegal, illegal then. is now good. Yeah. <laughs> you can now do that. <laughs> But what about the strangle guy from Texas? I forget his name. Beard? He's at Ole Miss. He's at because Ole Miss. There's a lot less police presence in Chicago. <laughs> so I feel like the call that would be made by his wife while she's being strangled, they they come later, he'd be able to clean up quicker. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I can't even get a face for that one. That's so bad. Holy shit. Oh my goodness! Uh, where do we go? <laughs> All right, get Matt LeBeau on here. Get Matt LeBeau on here so we can so we can get some. Oh man! This week's uh, random wildcat <laughs> of the week. Uh, <laughs> um, so because I still haven't sat down and and made a list to just randomly generate a number, I asked Chris for his uh, his selection of a of a graduation year. Wait, he supplied what? I gotta do that. Wow. Oh. Wow. 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 Wildcat of the week. Wow. wow. That's Owen um, Wilson saying wow. <laughs> <laughs> so our Wildcat of the week comes from you from the 2009 uh, Final Four team. A uh, a guard from Bayonne, New Jersey. The Bayonne uh, Bomber. The Bayonne Bomber. Corey Stokes. <laughs> Famously, the most successful player that Dan Hurley has ever coached. Dan oh, Hurley was his high school yeah. coach at yeah. St. Benedict's. I had wow. I kind of did a double take because um, I knew he went to St. Benedict's, but I did not remember that Dan Hurley was the coach at that time. So let's That's talk cool. Corey Stokes. Chris, he was actually your contemporary. Yes. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> so go yes. go for it. Tell Stokes, us about the war, Chris. Stokes, <laughs> Stokes was a um, was a 2011 grad. Um, I always liked Corey personally. Um, I, I met him several times when we were on campus together, and I've seen him and met him and his family several times since. Um, always the nicest guy. So like, there's some moments there that that we can that we can t- talk and t- talk about a little bit. But I, just to lead off there, he is an exceedingly Good dude, nice guy to nice guy to see. Love seeing him. In, love seeing him at games. Um, when he got to campus, uh, the 2007-2008 year was um, an interesting start to that year. First off, we came off of the Elite Eight two years prior. The season before was like one of those Jay Wright years where it was like we lost a lot of talent. You kind of had to rebuild and reload a little bit, and we thought man, if this team could just find a way into the tournament, that would be a, a good result. We did. Um, and then we knew that we had good recruiting class come over, headlined by a three-guard lead of Corey Fisher, Corey Stokes, and Malcolm Grant. So, like, everyone was excited. The guard U moniker was really starting to fully take off at that point in time. And you knew Corey Fisher was – everyone always talked about Corey Fisher being like he's just got the ball in a string, the the old joke of like they call him Fisher Price because he toys with people, whatever. But Corey Stokes was known coming in as the shooter. Um, and he was uh, like pure stroke, just like pretty decent sized for his uh, position and like could really shoot the shit out of the ball. And that was that was what everyone knew coming in. Came in. And Jay Wright was Jay Wright. Those those guys didn't have the ability to play all that much freshman year. I mean, they played. They got good. They got decent minutes because they became the – a lot of the team from the from before um, was already there. But they came in and were able to play key reserve minutes. 
but it wasn't probably what they thought they were going to get coming into the program that had just been like an eight seed um, in the, in the NCAA tournament, eight and nine seed in the NCAA tournament the year before uh, Stokes was Stokes was like solid, but like, I don't think he ever really fully lived up to the shooting um, thing until a little bit later in his career. I'm not looking at the stats. So if you guys want to check me on this, you can, but I, I felt mean, like his, his freshman year was a little bit rough, but like eventually yeah. even out where he was like shooting 38%. He's sixth all time in Villano- uh, three point field goals for Villanova. Yeah. Players. He, went on he lived tear. up to the moniker by the end of his career. Yeah. He lived up to the moniker yeah. um, for sure. Like the Bayonne bomber, right? Like he, he, he's a hell of a three point shooter. It was a rough start though. That year was interesting because that, that for his freshman year was just like, was brutal. We took a couple losses early in that season. And then, and then later on, we won a five game losing streak right in the heart of the, right in the heart of conference play capped off by a loss to St. Joe's when we still played that game late. And then we went on a run to the sweet 16 as like the last team in the tournament. We won a 12, five game. We put up 18 and, on C- on UConn. Yep. And then 08, 09 year went to the final four. And then that 10, and that 10 year was really good until the very end. And the 11 year had a really good start too. So he, uh, look, I, I, I'm trying to think of like some key moments for, for Stokes. I remember we played Marquette my senior year. So his, he was sophomore, my senior year. And it was coming down the stretch. Marquette was good. And he drilled a three right before halftime. I believe that was like a really key moment in that game. So like I, I'm just trying to think of some like really key moments from his career. That was that was key, that, that was a big one. The only other thing that I'll just bring up, um, just because I did say with it, there was a moment in the it was either the 2010 or the 2011 year where he got suspended for some he got suspended for some reason. Um, I forget exactly the. I forget some of the detail. It kind of. It might have been like he was out of Kelly's, and then I don't know. It was like before, or after a loss to Kansas State. Uh, <laughs> um, but he was out. Of, maybe he was out at the bars, and then and then was like, I don't know, take a piss or something. I, I, it was something. There was something with that, but like I forget. It was all. It's all water under the bridge at this point. But like. It was some. It was some stuff that like you only get in trouble with at Villanova. Like no other place would would you would get in trouble for that. But like I really liked Stokes. I thought he was a, a good guy. He's a loyal, very loyal supporter of the program. Um, yeah. And you still see him at games and stuff like that all the time. So uh, yeah, love seeing like, him out. Um, great guy. Yeah, he was one of those ones I would see around camp, camp, even around campus. Just when I was there, he would still be there. Like I caught him on the. R5 a couple of times. Um, yeah, I mean, just elite shooter. And obviously it started slow, which I think for a lot of freshmen can t- kind of go that way. But one of those one of those uh, unsung players from that era that, like, I think when, I mean, unsung, because you have, you have the idea of, like, it's at least the way I've, I, what I've always viewed it is, like, yeah, you have Scotty, you had, like, Dante, you had Dwayne. And then you had like the Corys, uh, and but it was never like when you always thought about it, you always go to Fisher you always thought first. about Fisher, yep. But like Stokes was one of the great three point shooters, a great Villanova basketball player, and just like I mean, yeah, just like a really like key piece uh, for for a Final Four team and for teams that had um, College Game Day TBT to that. I don't think he played in that game, but uh, yeah, he was hurt um, yeah. for a lot of his senior year, I think. Yeah, he was definitely like nagging that. injuries or suspended. I guess I don't know. Um, you tell me, Chris. The um, the thing is, I was right. It was it was yeah. <laughs> it was February of 2010. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if he. I actually don't know if he got suspended. Um, yeah, I know. But, I was just making a joke. Um, Big East fans get really uh, angry if you start spreading rumors about basketball teams, whether there's truth <laughs> behind them or not. Um, just another shot at. Georgetown and Providence fans tonight. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't have too much more to add. Like I said, that was, you know, early on in, in my uh, in my fandom with the team. He was just usually, like Willie said, the other Corey. Um, but you look at his body of work, 
being able to contribute as a freshman and a sophomore on those really successful teams. Yep. And then, um, you know, we all know what kind of happened in general after that. But, um, yeah, it was a nice pick, if I do say so myself, as the one who, who picked him. Um, I thought it was funny, again, that uh, Dan Hurley was his, uh, was his high school coach and that he was teammates with J.R. Smith. Um, he could have, like, a really good – uh, six degrees of separation, kind of, uh, kind of thing. Who with who? Test me. I want to see if I can get this. I mean, he was high school teammates with J.R. Smith, so you can get a lot of places with that. A famous um, college golfer, so you kind of go from there to like Tiger Woods. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can easily get to Tiger college. Woods. Um, Not a big timeout guy either. <laughs> big soup fan. Yeah. I th- oh, the other thing I wanted to call out just is um, not like for uh, we had uh, recruit rankings coming out uh, or not just the updated recruiting rankings. A um, couple of like big changes uh, came across it. Um, the biggest one was Josiah Mosley, uh, our forward from Stony Point High School in Texas. I can't remember what high school it is, whatever it is, um, jumped up 61 spots. Um, just so basically like for like anyone who's like, it's not that. Well, it kind of is that, but like, it's not like, oh, all of a sudden he's 61 places better, but it's just like, as people evaluate more, as he improves as well, um, they kind of read, readjust the rankings. So that there was a jump of, for him, um, Malcolm Thomas uh, entered in the rankings for the first time. And then Matt Hodge, I can't remember where he uh, ended up falling in the rankings. He also, uh, or he, he also rose. I just can't remember to what spot he went in the rankings, but in the 247 top 150, which 247 is now, like, if you're looking for basketball rankings, like, you go there, like, ESPN's stopped putting money behind that. Um, but, yeah, Matt Hodge, who's from um, Jersey, uh, also went up to, I think it's, like, 60-something as well. I love that we're saying he's from New Jersey. Um, he's from Belgium. It's a, really it's a Central Jersey kid, specifically. It's a Central yeah. Jersey guy. Uh, Corey Stokes is a North Jersey guy. Um but uh, yeah, and then just out of curiosity, Willie, where is Thomas Sorber on the uh, on the rankings? I'm just just for my own curiosity. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing no else. Ulterior uh, motives. If, yeah, uh, I'll let you know once I've. Yeah, <laughs> once I, <laughs> I know you wouldn't have that one off the top of your head. I just yeah. Again, uh, yeah. There's no rumors here. It's just uh... my memory I wasn't mean... too bad, by the way, on the Corey Stokes Marquette game. I was just like, that was real, like Grandpa talking about the war and having a flashback. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was a two point. It was a two point with, but it was a two point score. But he got it at the. He it was pretty close to the buzzer at at the end of the half, and it put us up five at halftime. And then we absolutely fucking clobbered them in the second half. We won that game one hundred two eighty four. I probably remember that too. I don't know how many hundred point games you've had. Seven. <laughs> we had two back to back that year. Syracuse and Marquette. We put up one oh two each, right back to back. That's an I didn't I didn't know that. How I don't know if we've ever done that before. Back to back. I just said that we did it. <laughs> other than well, that. Other than that. <laughs> Chris. Like when people say someone's <laughs> the best player in the world except for and then they name the best player in the world. It's the most oh, infuriating okay. thing of all time. Hodge went up from 103 to 67. There we go. Nice. So, yeah. Good. yeah We're, I mean, Susan rightly points out that Mosley is the number one ranked player in Texas now. It's true. Yep. Awesome. I think we're Gucci, man. Yeah, I don't have too much Thanks, more. Brian. Thanks, Brian. Shout out to Gucci. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. so Chris, do I close this out? Yeah, you go ahead. Is this man. my role? All right. Go well, ahead. thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we will be back next Monday. Should be the same time next Monday, uh, where we're going to recap what happened over the weekend with St. John's and uh, Butler. And then we're going to preview uh, Marquette. And I think we have Providence as well on that Sunday. So we'll talk about those. Uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of a heart monitor. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, all star selection should be all star selection too. should be coming out, and Jalen Brunson should be an all star starter. We'll see if he is, but 
they should have they should announce it. They might announce it the next Thursday, actually, but we'll see. One more uh, quick thing. If if you're real sickos and want to listen to us again tomorrow, we're going to be joining the uh, St. John's Spaces tomorrow night at 9 o'clock to talk what's happened to both of our programs since the last time we talked to them on our podcast. Um, that'll be a Spaces on Twitter uh, around 9 o'clock tomorrow. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. And as always, let's go Nova. Nova.